Beatrice Horseman is one of the most complicated characters in all of BoJack Horseman. As the character is slowly revealed to the audience, so is her history, and though her actions are often detestable, we soon discover that she has a tragic and complicated past. The show never justifies her actions, but it does help us empathize with her pain, and it allows us to better understand the ongoing tolls of generational trauma and does so through some of the best episodes in the entire series. So today we're going to look at the timeline of Beatrice Horseman from her tragic childhood to her lonely death. And yes, I know I said I wasn't going to do a sad timeline next, but I gotta get these out of the way so we can get to the fun ones. You know, over the course of BoJack Horseman, Beatrice regularly criticized the careers of her husband and son, though she never really offered them any advice or alternatives. If only she had known about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that has thousands of classes for creative or curious people. It's an incredible place to explore new skills or even just dive deeper into a passion you already have. This is the perfect opportunity to learn some new skills. There are tons of classes no matter what your interests are. If you're a fan of this channel, there's a good chance you like animation. I was just checking out Don Mupati's lessons on animating with Cinema 4D. Or if you want to learn more about what I do, you can check out these great lessons on video production, like editing. The first 1,000 people who use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium membership, so you can try it out for free and see if it's for you. There's seriously something for everyone there, and it's a great way to learn a new skill. Seems like a no-brainer. Beatrice Horseman was born in 1938 to parents Joseph and Honey Sugarman. Her brother Cracker Jack was much older, likely born in the early 1920s. The Sugarman family owned the Sugarman Sugar Cube Company and lived a high class and privileged lifestyle. Growing up, the family would spend much of their summers in Harper's Landing, Michigan at the family's lakefront summer home. From a young age, certain gender norms were ingrained in Beatrice that would affect how she saw the world for the remainder of her life. While her father and brother were able to enjoy delicious treats, she was forced to eat sugar on lemon slices for dessert so as not to gain weight even at this young age. You can sprinkle some sugar on a lemon. That's a good healthy girl snack. Oh, all right. In summer 1944, the entire family went to Harper's Landing shortly before Cracker Jack's deployment to Europe to fight in World War II. The family was happy and had a fun dynamic. Cracker Jack would play piano and duet with his mother, Honey. He seemed to have a strong connection to Beatrice as well. The family took their final full family portrait together in Harper's Landing that summer before leaving. Around the winter of 1944, shortly after being deployed to Europe, Cracker Jack was shot and killed. In summer 1945, the family returned to Harper's Landing for the first summer without Cracker Jack. The family was struggling to handle the loss of Cracker Jack, but Honey got the worst of it. Joseph's discomfort with Honey's pain and grief was apparent, and he left the pair of them at the summer home. By August, America had declared the war over, and fireworks marked the celebrations in Harper's Landing. Honey decided that she and Beatrice needed to go out and celebrate, and they ended up at a restaurant in town. While there, Honey had a bit of a mental breakdown. She publicly sang her half of the duet she used to sing with Cracker Jack, I Will Always Think of You. After finishing singing, Honey continued her breakdown, chugging alcohol and accosting Cracker Jack's friend Sal, as well as kissing him. Honey then forced poor Beatrice to drive the two of them home to the Sugarman place, even though she was just a child who had never operated a car before. While driving, Honey smashed her foot down in the gas pedal and the two of them crashed into a gas station, nearly killing them both. After returning home, Joseph showed intense anger towards Honey for allowing this to happen, as Honey begged Joseph to take her pain away. Shortly after this incident, Joseph had Honey lobotomized, effectively putting her in a zombified state for the remainder of her life. Beatrice was devastated. Beatrice? Promise me you'll never love anyone as much as I loved Cracker Jack. This was advice that Beatrice would seemingly take to heart. Beatrice returned to school where she was regularly picked on by her classmates, particularly Clemelia Bloodsworth. Shortly after the events of Honey's lobotomy, poor Beatrice contracted scarlet fever, something that disgustingly Joseph would blame Honey for. How could you not have known she has scarlet fever? Beatrice would fortunately overcome the illness, but in the process, Joseph burned all of Beatrice's belongings, including her beloved baby horse doll. Another traumatic experience for the young girl. In 1963, at 18 years old, Beatrice debuted at her very own debutante ball. She went through this process effectively to humor her father, though it was clear that she didn't think much of the tradition. Will it end poverty, war, and injustice, or bring back civil rights activist Medgar Evers? Joseph attempted to pair Beatrice up with Corbin Kremerman, a member of the wealthy and respected Kremerman family. But at the ball, Beatrice met a horse named Butterscotch Horseman. Butterscotch seemingly represented everything that her father didn't. The two shared some banter, and eventually they ditched the rest of the ball together, spending a lovely evening under the stars. Two weeks after the ball, Joseph 
Joseph was still furious over Beatrice's actions and forced her to make it up to Corbin by going out with him. While on a stroll through the park, Beatrice slowly started to realize that she actually had a lot in common with Corbin Creamerman, and she started to entertain the idea of actually being with him. Oh dear! <laughs> This was unfortunately interrupted by explosive vomit, which led to Beatrice learning that she is pregnant with Butterscotch's child. Butterscotch initially wanted Beatrice to get rid of the baby, but her traumatic experience with her baby doll as a child prevented her from entertaining the idea. The two of them eloped to San Francisco, and on January 2nd, 1964, Bojack Horseman was born. The Horseman family dynamic was an unhealthy one. Throughout the 60s and early 70s, Beatrice and Butterscotch resented each other greatly. Butterscotch resented Beatrice for not supporting his desire to write a great American novel, while Beatrice resented Butterscotch for not accepting her father's help and providing a better life for herself and Bojack. But in 1970, Butterscotch finally agreed to accept that help, he took a job at Sugarman West, and very quickly the Horseman family's living situation started to improve. But this didn't improve their relationship. The two of them consistently fought about things like infidelity. I can hear you're flirting through the wall when you're supposedly working on your novel. Beatrice's resentment would extend to her son Bojack as well. She consistently abused Bojack verbally. She would force him to perform for her friends when he didn't want to. In 1972, Bojack tried one of Beatrice's cigarettes. Beatrice then forced Bojack to finish the entire cigarette and even berated him for coughing while smoking it. When she asked what she was punishing him for, Beatrice said this. I'm punishing you for being alive. Beatrice and Butterscotch's fight over his infidelity would continue through their relationship. In 1973, they got into a particularly aggressive fight while Bojack watched Secretariat on The Dick Cavett Show. After Butterscotch left, Beatrice sat down and said this to Bojack. You better grow up to be something great, to make up for all the damage you've done. I will. Sometime in the mid to late 70s, Beatrice saw the Henrik Ibsen play A Doll's House, which sent her into a bit of an existential crisis, forcing Butterscotch to pick up Bojack from soccer practice. Beatrice remained cruel to Bojack through his teenage years. When he joined the football team, she told him he would just embarrass himself. In the mid 80s, Beatrice's son Bojack left home to pursue a comedy career in Los Angeles, and in 1987, he landed the lead role on Situation Comedy Horse and Around. In 1988, Beatrice attended one episode taping of Horse and Around, but she wasn't impressed and continued to throw intense shade at her son despite his success, ridiculing his work. She also said something particularly haunting to Bojack. I hope you die before I do so you never have to know what it's like to lose a mother. Obviously, her mother's lobotomy continued to loom over Beatrice even in 1988. Her relationship with her son Bojack remained strained for years. In 1999, after Beatrice's father Joseph passed away, Beatrice brought Bojack a painting of Joseph's. Even three years after Horse and Around ended, Beatrice would criticize the show's worth in front of her son. I never understood the appeal. It's just a bunch of silly stories. Some people like silly stories. In 1999, Butterscotch had an affair with the Horseman young housekeeper Henrietta Plachke, impregnating her in the process. In one of his lowest moments, Butterscotch begged Beatrice to help him through the situation, and despite her resentment, she does. Beatrice gave Henrietta an ultimatum. She offered to pay for Henrietta's nursing school tuition, but only if she gave up the baby for adoption. On September 24th, 2000, Henrietta gave birth to a baby horse. Beatrice held her hand the entire time, but as soon as the baby was born, Beatrice took the child away, never giving her a chance to see it, despite her cries. In 2009, Butterscotch Horseman passed away after slipping and hitting his head on a rock in the middle of a duel. Beatrice and Bojack attended the funeral together, and even here Beatrice chose to chastise Bojack's career on Horse and Around. Beatrice gave the eulogy at his funeral, claiming, My husband is dead, and everything is worse now. Unfortunately for Beatrice, Butterscotch had squandered away much of her family inheritance, forcing Beatrice to sell her house and her jewelry. Shortly after, Bojack put her up in Walnut Springs Nursing Home in Santa Barbara. In 2015, Beatrice reached out to Bojack after reading his autobiography, One Trick Pony. She expressed regret that he sees her as a monster and sort of apologizes, but not in any meaningful way. She tells Bojack that he was born broken and leaves him with these parting words. You're Bojack Horseman. There's no cure for that. In 2017, Henrietta's daughter Hollyhock discovered Bojack in search of her biological mother. She thinks that Bojack might be her father, not realizing that he is actually her half-brother. While living with Bojack, the two of them visit Beatrice in Walnut Springs Nursing Home and spend some quality time with her, though Beatrice has begun to suffer from dementia at this point. The two start visiting every week, though Beatrice seemingly cannot recognize Bojack. Beatrice continued to be critical of Bojack and Hollyhock, even in her old age. You could be thin too. Just go easy on the sweets, and when you go somewhere, don't walk. Gallop! In an attempt to get her to recognize him through her dementia, Bojack acts out an episode of Horsin' Around, 
But this deeply disturbs Beatrice. In her upset state, she pushed over another patient and is subsequently expelled from the nursing home, forcing her to move in with Bojack. While at Bojack's, Hollyhock gets Beatrice a baby doll that is very reminiscent of the one she had as a child. Beatrice became very fixated on the doll, taking care of it like a real baby. In a selfish act, Bojack threw Beatrice's baby doll over his balcony, deeply upsetting Beatrice once again, and given her past trauma with her baby horse doll, this is pretty understandable. While at Bojack's, Beatrice is very taken with Hollyhock and continued to make her coffee every single morning. Beatrice, this coffee is amazing. Unbeknownst to Hollyhock, Beatrice had been spiking the coffee with Chub Be Gone, a weight loss supplement that utilizes amphetamines, similar to what she would take most of her life, and clearly a result of those dated gender norms instilled in her by her parents as a child. One day, Hollyhock collapsed in the bathroom and then is taken to the hospital, revealing that she had overdosed on amphetamines. When Bojack realized that Beatrice had been spiking Hollyhock's coffee, he furiously took her to a new nursing home, determined to get her out of his life once and for all. As Bojack walked away from Beatrice, she finally recognized him. Bojack? Huh? Bojack tells Beatrice a story, painting her a picture of somewhere much nicer than the nursing home. He told her she was eating vanilla ice cream. So... delicious. In October 2018, Beatrice Horseman died in the hospital. Bojack stayed with her in her final moments as she screamed and cried her way into the afterlife. Her final words were, I see you. Though it isn't clear if she was telling Bojack that she saw him, or if she was asking for the intensive care unit. Beatrice Horseman lived a very long and full life filled with both incredible privilege and immense tragedy. So many of the things that Beatrice said and did were completely detestable. She treated people horribly, especially her son, but it's important to look at her attitude in context. She was forced into a box as a young girl, told what role she needed to fill. Her brother was tragically killed in the war, sending her family into a spiral. Her mother, who seemed to be the person she was closest to in the world, was lobotomized in her grief, leaving Beatrice with only her ill-equipped and problematic father as her support system. Beatrice Horseman was an abuser but she was a victim first. She was a strong link in the chain of generational trauma that plagued the horsemen's and those around them. It's natural to feel disdain or even hatred towards Beatrice, but knowing her entire story, it's also easy to feel empathy. She experienced things that are hard to even comprehend. It's no wonder that that sweet little sugarman didn't stay so sweet. Folks, thanks so much for tuning into another BoJack Timeline. I promise these will get more fun as we go, but I'm trying to get the more tragic stories knocked out first. Let me know what timelines you want to hear next, and of course, stay tuned for more. Peace. Johnny! Two challenges!